Fortnite is a phenomenon, a game set in a virtual world in which the rule is kill or be killed. At times, it's had three million people playing at once. But it's the effect it may be having on gamers in the real world which is causing concern. It's being linked to a rise in violent behaviour. The latest alleged incident live streamed to thousands. And experts are warning it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. I love a current affair. This should be fun. Here we go, back at it again with yet another hit piece on video games by the Australian media. And since we, the gamers, are so very violent, why don't we all just take a moment to violently smack that like button really, really good. Anyway, uh, today's video is a little bit of a different one. I've done stuff like this in the past, but today's video is a breakdown on this piece of amazing investigative journalism by an award-winning program here in Australia known as A Current Affair. And yes, just a side note, I have dressed up a little bit to get a little bit journalistic, I guess. Oh, and just another side note, this is not photoshopped at all. It says the curse of Fortnite. 100% like that, that is real from their program. Yeah. Oh, and yes, before anyone out there wants to point it out, I was on a current affair just a couple weeks ago and... Let's let's roll it. To some people, you are living the ultimate dream. It is the ultimate dream. And he says he's making decent coin doing just this. When the World Health Organization adds gaming disorder to its class. I have to pa pause this right here because what have they done? Why is she rotating like an actual character in the? G Why? Why did you do this? Well, this is awkward. As you can see here, it's so easy for anyone, whether you're a YouTube sensation or just a subscriber. It kind of feels like, like Inception or something. I was on their program, now they're in mine while I was on theirs. This is really weird. But I thought I'd give them a chance and that actual piece that they did was about YouTube as a job. And well, it was actually a pretty good thing. It wasn't a hit piece on YouTube at all. So if you want to check that out, you can in the description down below. But now we move on to this show because this show is gonna be very, very different. Because today we're talking about how video games make people into violent creatures of the night. Ooh, that's apparently what a current affair wants you to think. Fortnite is a phenomenon, a game set in a virtual world in which the rule is kill or be killed. At times it's had three million people playing at once but it's the effect it may be having on gamers in the real world which is causing concern. It's being linked to a rise in violent behaviour. The latest alleged incident live streamed to thousands. Okay, so I have to stop her right there before we even probably dive into the segment itself. They've already got facts wrong. First of all, this incident with Mr. Deadmoth and him smacking his wife, that, that was not streamed to thousands of people live because it was actually viewed later by thousands and then by millions of people once the story Lot. But at the time of the live stream itself, it was actually only live streamed to a handful of people or so. There wasn't too many people watching this live. It's just funny, before they even get to the actual story itself and with just the lead in anchor telling what the story is about, they've already got major facts wrong and it continues throughout the rest of the story this way. They just keep getting things wrong. And it's not just about getting the facts wrong, but it's about the way they describe stuff in the rest of the segment. Like, like this is exactly what I'm sick of. Check this out. A game set in a virtual world in which the rule is kill or be killed. Stop saying that. Just please stop saying that. Stop dumbing down the game's premise and stating to kill or be killed. It's one of the most annoying things to hear. I could just as easily dumb down a current affair and uh, actually I don't think I could dumb down a current affair but but if I was to dumb down a current affair I'd probably say something like this is a current affair the program where facts don't matter but putting fear into the hearts of grandmas around the nation is our number one priority. Mr. Monday, what happened that night? D-Day for Luke Monday. It was a video game, was it worth all this? Okay, I have to stop it right there. I know we just got into the video, but like, like one second into the program, they ask him, Mr. Monday, what happened? 
Like, dude, it was live streamed and apparently live streamed to thousands of people around the world, but millions of people have seen it. The whole thing was live streamed. You've seen it yourself. Why ask a redundant, stupid question? What kind of reporting, what kind of journalism is this? It just clearly shows that they just don't do their research and they've got to ask the question on the spot. Like, it's, it's just dumb. The Fortnite nightmare. I can't say that I'm all that surprised um, at the recent events. And other online games are a growing obsession getting out of hand, according to those dealing with their repercussions. All right, um, I, I didn't want to stop it there, but what is this creepy editing? What? Why are they trying to make gamers look like hackers from the 90s or something? Like, wh why are these rooms all dark and mysterious and just creepy and it's just... What? Like, where? who is in charge of this? But for real, why does it just have to be so creepy? I don't get it. Like, I sit in my living room playing games, I sit behind this desk playing games sometimes, and I'm never in the dark like a complete creep this way. It's just not realistic. It just isn't. Anyway, let's continue and let's find out what Mr. Deadmoth's statistics are behind his madness. Aggression and violence when somebody is prevented from gaming uh, is certainly not unusual. Monday reportedly plays for at least eight hours a day with over 4,000 games of Fortnite and 15,000 kills. Oh my goodness, whoa! Okay, so they're trying to make it out like he's some sort of military spy secret agent or something that has gone out on a killing rampage and has 15,000 kills behind him. Sorry, my mistake. Um. 15,000 kills under his belt. That, that doesn't sound like a gamer. To me, that honestly sounds like they're trying to portray this guy as an actual murderer or something along those lines. The worst part here is they claim this 15,000 kills under his belt and then they cut to the next part of their story which involves actual murderers. And just the way they segue between these, it's just unfair and just disgusting and 15,000 kills under his belt. Sydney man Daniel Chapman is now serving three years in jail after fatally stabbing his father Stephen because he interrupted his video game. Police and paramedics arrived within minutes, but the 56-year-old couldn't be saved. When he's asked to come to the dinner table, he continues on, on the computer. And I believe um, that's what the argument might have been over. A 13-year-old girl died and her younger brother is accused of shooting and killing her all over a video game. And we have our third semi-finalist moving on. He is 23-year-old David Katz, a.k.a. Brad. But David Katz lost his game and then his sense of reason. Shooting dead two and injuring ten. People were calling their family, saying, saying goodbyes. Gaming disorder is a very real disorder. You see what I mean? They literally went from this guy who slapped his wife to actual murderers, and they after they stated he had 15,000 kills under his belt. That is pretty dark, but on top of that, gaming disorder? Really? Old man, sorry. G g g gaming disorder. What? I could hardly get the phrase gaming disorder out of my mouth just then. I began to stutter as I was about to probably throw up because it is such a ridiculous term. But before we even talk about gaming disorder and this old chump here, um, let's back it up for a moment. None of the people mentioned just then have actual gaming disorder. All of them have other mental health issues and they happen to play video games. If any of these people were participating in other hobbies with the exact same mental issues and then went through similar things, they probably would have snapped the exact same way because of their mental issues. It wasn't up to a gaming disorder. The reason these people snap? 
Well, they're just not mentally stable. It has nothing to do with the video game. It just happens so that the video game is there. On the lighter side of things, in comparison to some of these others, which I will mention in a second, uh, Mr. Deadmoth, he actually has been reported to potentially have Asperger's. So he doesn't process social situations like most of us. And in his scenario, he snapped because, well, he didn't know how to, well, just control that situation in a no normal social environment. And well, we saw what happened. And then on the much darker side of things, another Australian, Daniel Chapman, also from Sydney, he was playing video games on his computer and well, he stabbed and killed his dad. But what they critically failed to mention is that Daniel Chapman was on medication. However, he had stopped taking his medication for two weeks prior to the incident of killing his dad. This murderer didn't have a gaming disorder. What he had was a mental health issue prior to the incident and he wasn't on his prescribed medication at the time of the incident. And this old fella here is my absolute favorite because he blames video games and gaming disorder so he can bring in patients every week to rake up money and allow his deep boomer pockets to get even deeper. Gaming disorder is a very real disorder. It was included in the International Classification of Diseases as from June this year by the World Health Organization. That it was encroaching Professor John Saunders specializes in addictions uh, yeah. and treats many gaming addicts every week. It's like a drug, he says, that takes over a gamer's body. The person experiences harm to their physical or mental health, or they're impaired in some way in terms of their social or family functioning, and they carry on gaming nonetheless. Yep, I was 100% correct. He does bring in multiple gaming disorder patients every single week, as described by the one and only a current affairs reporter. And well, it must be some very, very good moolah. Uh, old man. I don't know why I have American dollars, but I, I do for some reason. Um, l let's continue. I feel that violent games are, you know, uh, contributing to this, certainly, in some way. Gamers will argue that Fortnite, the most popular game by far, is less aggressive than most others. Psychologist Brad Marshall doesn't agree. Is Fortnite and the fact that there is not actually any blood and guts and gore, if you will, any better than, a, than, than other games, um, I would suggest probably not. The fact is that you're still seeing the actions of someone dying. You know, when someone does die, you're still seeing your character put the boot into them and all this sort of stuff. Okay, uh, hold up a second. Who is this guy and why is he looking in two different directions? Gaming disorder. Okay, I I'm sorry. I I'm not going to make fun of people's appearances. I'm not going to do that. But it does appear that uh, this guy, whoever he is, some sort of psychologist or something, is throwing around his own personal opinions and isn't backing up anything with any sort of data, any proof, anything at all. It's just crap coming out of his mouth. Have you got any aggression, do you think, online, Luke? We see that on a daily basis. Every day I'd have at least one parent tell me uh, that there's been an aggressive response when they've tried to manage this stuff at home. Watch what happens when this mum switches off the internet. Um, wait, uh, <laughs> did they, I'm trying to keep a straight face here. Did, did a current affair just use waffle pone as, as proof? Um, what? Current affair, you can't be serious. Waffle pone, for those who don't know, is like nine years old. It was this moment where it was just a meme created by two brothers where his World of Warcraft account gets taken away by his mum and then he loses his crap. He just goes crazy. It was a joke. It wasn't real. It was a comedy skit. And then there were like 20 other videos that they made. It wasn't real. And The Current Affair just used that as proof to their story. Watch what happens when this mum switches off the internet. I'm gonna run away! I'm gonna run away now! I'm gonna... Oh man, <laughs> this is really bad. This, this is terrible. A current affair. You just prove that you don't do your research. Like, oh, I just, you just lost. I, you gave me the victory.
I was trying to earn it and you just gave it to me. <laughs> I can't. This is terrible, man. How could they use this in their video? Watch what happens when this mum switches off the internet. And the best part is, they don't even get it right. They say what happens when the internet turns. Oh, oh man, I'm so done here. I'm so done. Would you like to make any apology at all or say anything? It's not the time and place. Sadly, the professor believes we'll see many more gamers face allegations like today's. Gaming disorder in Australia will become an increasing problem and an increasingly serious problem before it gets better. And Luke Monday's bail will continue and his case will be back in court on the 10th of January. Yep, yep, there we have it guys. The curse of Fortnite. It's 100% real. It's rotting our brains. Whew, um, yeah, I, I'm done with that. That, a current affair news report, I've got nothing else to say. They completely just crapped on themselves with that terrible piece there at the end with Waffle Pwn, added on top of all the mistakes they brought throughout the entire report. And um, on top of that, Channel 9 themselves, who is the home of A Current Affair, they did have another news report online, which got a huge backlash, as you can see on screen right here. Oh boy. They're not doing very well with these news reports on Fortnite and banning violent video games. Look, I'm gonna stop trying to be funny. I'm not the Funniest guy out there, but what I will say is I'm gonna deliver a message to Channel 9, to Australians in general, I guess. Um, it's parenting. It's 100% up to the parents. You've got to do your job as a parent to look after your child. Don't let your three or four or five or six or seven year old play Fortnite for 10 hours a day. Don't do it. A little kid under the age of, let's say seven, shouldn't be playing Fortnite in the first place. It's as simple as that. They shouldn't be playing a game where you are trying to eliminate other players online. And you shouldn't be really playing online games. Give them something really simple. Allow them to do that and allow them to play other games. And just simply manage the time between the child and the video game. Don't let them get hooked. Don't let them just play it for hours on end because, well, it's a nanny device. It's it's home care. It's just, it's your job to be a parent. It's as simple as that. I'm 26 years old. I don't have a child. I've got friends who now have children of the ages of two and three around there. And well, what do they do? They don't let their kids play games all day. They don't let their kids sit on YouTube kids all day because you can find some pretty crazy stuff on the internet and you shouldn't do that. It's so simple. Don't go banning video games for everyone because of a small, small, small amount of people. A minority, a 0.0000000001% of people shouldn't be the targets of an entire demographic. It's like banning chocolate or something because well, some people eat too much of it and eventually they get diabetes. Or maybe some people who go out there and drink way too much alcohol and become alcoholic and beat the crap out of their family members or something along those lines. And there's so many different examples I could bring up. Even a more sort of relatable example is watching movies or TV shows that happen to be violent and people reenacting those things. That happens. That happens more than video game reenactments in real life and people beating up their significant others or something along those lines. You shouldn't be blaming certain people for everyone and just ruining everyone else's experience. It's as simple as that. I don't get how these old people don't understand it. And it really, really, really annoys the hell out of me.